So guys how are you guys what if Naruto summoned Rias in DXD World short movie? Rias Gremory sighed as she did paperwork within her club room, who knew it was so demanding. The girl with the crimson hair that reached mid-thigh leaned back in her chair and stretched both arms above her head, looking in the clock in the room her club operates in, she saw that it was nearing 8 at night. The rest of her friends were out and about getting more contracts from people who wanted their desires to come true, feeling her stomach rumble she stood up to leave. I think he'll go buy some food, Rhea said to herself, just as she was about to leave, she felt a light calling out to her, a summoning, right now. She frowned, she only usually took requests that required a high-class devil, such as curse removal or monster slaying, this request seemed to just call out to her though, so with a sigh, ignoring getting dinner for herself, she teleported to the requester. The red-haired girl found herself standing within the living room after her spell had completed, looking around she saw that the place seemed fairly new, the floor had a brown carpet on it. To her left was a flat screen TV that seemed close to 60 inches, underneath it was a small shelf that had a DVD player, VHS, a PlayStation 3 and a Y. in front of her was a window, with a small table in front of it, on top of the table was a bonsai tree, and a picture frame, behind her was a wooden desk with a lamp, a computer chair and an expensive looking computer. Right next to that was a bookshelf with some figurines on it along with the books, to her right was an awfully colored orange sofa with a coffee table in front of it. Farther down to the right was the joint kitchen, it had a white fridge, a moderate looking stove and sink all along the far wall, there were some appliances here and there like a microwave and blender, there were also several cabinets as well, in the middle was a simple wooden dining table with two chairs on each side, there was a hallway on the left side of the room. Probably leading to the bathroom or bedroom. Holy crap, a voice called out causing Rias to stop her observations, she was mildly surprised she missed the man who was sitting on an orange armchair directly in front of her, that stupid looking circle actually works. I actually summoned a devil. Rias had to stop herself from frowning, her magical seals were not stupid. The redhead then took her time to look the man over, the man looked a bit older than herself, he was a blonde with wild spike hair, he had electric blue eyes that looked at her with curiosity, she then noticed that the man had three whisker-like marks on each cheek, he was wearing an orange t-shirt with blue sweepings, on his right middle finger was a simple black metal ring. The blonde then stood up, and Rias had to look up slightly since he was a few centimeters taller than herself. Naruto Uzumaki, nice to meet you, uh, Naruto introduced himself holding his right hand out to her. Rias Gremory, Rias replied in kind shaking his hand, he smiled at her, and she smiled back, so what is it that you want me to do Uzumaki-san? Just call me Naruto. Only if you do the same for me, the blonde nodded, you never told me what you wanted me to do Naruto-san, the man in question laughed sheepishly as he scratched the back of his head. I'm still trying to get over the fact that a devil looks more like a beautiful girl invested of some sort of horned humanoid, Rias had to hold back a smirk as she saw him run his eyes over her body before looking at her eyes again, she knew she was beautiful, and it was a bit of an ego boost when people complimented her, although, if it was too perverted she was troubled by it. This man had a more appreciative look in his eyes, so it was nothing too bad, not sure about the whole school uniform though, you into cosplay or something Rias-san. The devil looked at her attire and then looked back at the man, she was wearing the standard female uniform for her school, it consisted of a white buttoned down long sleeve shirt with vertical lines and a black bow at the collar, she had a black shoulder cape and a matching corset, there was also a magenta skirt with wild accents, she was also wearing short white socks and brown shoes. But showed off her beautiful legs rage nicely. No, I'm actually a student at Kuo Academy, this is just the uniform, Rias explained. Isn't that the all-girls academy that recently turned co-ed? Yes it is, although you still have not answered my question, what is it you wish for me to do Naruto-san? Her client was quiet for a bit as he pondered what he wanted, the way he closed his eyes while he was thinking, and the whisker marks on his cheeks, made him look like a fox. I can ask for whatever I want. The blonde asked as he looked at her. But in reason of course, I have the right to reject requests. And it won't cost me my soul or the sacrifice of virgin blood right? This caused Rias to giggle at his worry. Not at all, we devils had abolished that sort of thing years ago. Oh thank god, Rias winced a little at the name of the biblical lord, being a devil causes you to get hurt at the mention of his name, but by now Rias only got a mild shock, well, my request is simple really, Naruto smiled at her again, have dinner with me. Rias looked confused for a split second, as in go on a date with you. Naruto shook his head furiously, he then motioned for her to follow him into the kitchen, where the devil see that some food was being prepared. Nothing like that. Is it because I'm not pretty enough? She teased him, again the man shook his head, and there was a light blush on his cheek, Rias found it a bit cute to be honest. 
Then no you were very beautiful, we just met, and that would make you seem like a bit of a call girl, if I hired you out just to date me, he told her to sit down as went to prepare her a plate of whatever he just finished cooking, Riaz took off her shoulder cape and placed it on the back of the chair she was sitting on, it was facing the stove, so she could still see Naruto. Would you like something to drink? I got water, milk, orange juice, tea, you're not old enough for sacred beer, are you? No I am not, water will be fine though, Naruto placed a glass of iced water in front of her, which she took a sip of, the smells from where he was standing seemed divine, making her empty stomach demand for whatever the blonde stranger was coming, to alleviate some of the pain she kept talking, so why do you want me to eat with you then? She saw him have small smile on his face. I'm new to this town and don't have any friends yet, so when this girl have me a flyer for someone to grant my wish, I took my chance to see if this we true, eating by yourself gets lonely after all, Riaz nodded slowly, she rarely ate alone, since there was always someone to eat with her, so she really cold to understand him. Naruto then turned around and placed an elegant looking bowl of food in front of the devil, it was a bowl of seasoned rice with a cut of meat on top of it, on top of the met were several ingredients such as peppers and onions, there was also some sauce on top of it, Rhea swallowed the saliva that pooled in her mouth, the food smelled heavenly, now that it was in front of her. Naruto day down across from her with his own bowl and bottle of beer, she was confused by the third bowl he put in between them, you'll understand once you take a bite, he answered as if he read her mind. Taking the chopsticks in front of her, Riaz took a bite cautious bite of the food, it may smell good, but it could taste terrible after all, after swallowing the first mouthful, Riaz suddenly began to dig into the bowl in an unladylike fashion, the tastes and textures were dancing in her mouth, and she cold and stopped eating, it wasn't even two minutes when she had finished the bowl. The redhead was pouting when she found her bowl empty. Riaz heard Naruto chuckle before sliding the bowl in the middle to her, I knew that was going to happen, so I always have an extra bowl if my guests want seconds, he told her with a kind smile. Thank you, Riaz replied with a blush, Naruto was only halfway through his bowl, and she was saying a second one already. No problem, the two made small talk as they ate dinner, with Riaz going at a less frantic pace, they spoke of what grade Shes in, third year high school, what's it like being a devil, it was a lot more complicated than Naruto thought, hobbies she had, she told him her interest in Japan, and the like, in turn, he spoke about his hobbies, who knew this man liked to garden. How he got so good in cooking, it was either learn to cook, be broke for eating out too much or starve, and lastly his job. They are a writer. Riaz asked surprised as she helped him with the dishes, of course Naruto said she didn't have to help him do this, but an offhand comment about her not knowing how to do dishes from the blonde had her standing next to him wiping the plates after he soaked and rinsed them. Yeah I got a couple of books published in two years under two pseudonyms, Naruto admitted. That seems awfully fast for a writer. It helps knowing how to hook your audience, when all was said and done, Naruto made a contract with Riaz, even agreeing to call upon her if he needed anything else, as she was about to leave via magic Naruto stopped her, curious, she watched as he ran down the corridor to the left of the kitchen and came back with two books. Both are devoid of titles out names on the cover and seemed rather plain, although, the one in his left hand was thicker than the one in his right. What's this? Riaz stepped toward him. Payment, as well as shameless advertising, the blonde answered as an afterthought, both of these books will be released sometime this year, I had the publisher make me a few copies early just to give to my friends, I'm letting you take one. Really? Thank you, Riaz beamed at him, books seemed like a good payment for such a simple job, as she reached out to get both books, Naruto pulled them back. I said one, if you get both, y'all find out which two sets I write, I'd like you to only know one for now. That sounds rather dumb, Rhea said, crossing her arms just below her chest, Naruto just smirked at her, and she sighed, the devil reached out and took the smaller of the two books, it'll take this one of it, it's alright with you Naruto, the blonde nodded his head. Don't read it until you get home, it'll see you next time, Rhea's nodded and teleported through her magical circle. As she reappeared in her club room she sat at her desk and laid the book on it, she saw on the clock that it was already a bit part 10, and she was surprised, had she really spent two hours talking to Naruto. It felt shorter than that, that also probably explained why no one was in the club room. Deciding to take a quick shower before going to bed, she stripped her clothes off, first to go were her shoes and socks, next was the shoulder cape followed by the corset, next Riaz took off her bow and then her shirt, she then unhooked her dark green lace bra, freeing her breasts from their confines, she unzipped her skirt, letting it fall to the floor. Hooking the waistband of matching pair of green lace panties with her thumb, Riaz slid them, once she picked up all her clothes and placed them in a hamper, Riaz turned on her shower and stepped in. After 10 minutes of washing and cleaning herself, she stepped out and dyed her body, since she usually slept nude anyway, Riaz was about to go to her bedroom that was right next to the club room, when she saw the book on her desk. I might as well see what this is, she mumbled to herself, grabbing the book, Riaz went to her room and placed herself comfortably on her bed with her sheets over her and began to read. Time skip. 
Riaz was in class the glaring at the book on her desk, it was the very same book Naruto gave her yesterday, the book that she read before going to sleep the previous night. Why was she glaring at it? She hated the book, that's why. Naruto had given her a piece of smut, he was apparently the author Jiraiya and was writing the Icha Icha series that had become infamous worldwide, she knew of some students who had managed to get their hands on either the first or second one that came out in the past two years, like the perverted trio for example. While she was not against this sort of stuff, Riaz didn't like being tricked into reading it. That was when she plopped her head onto the desk with a groan, you're just lying to yourself and you know it, she thought to herself. Riaz liked the book, no, she really liked it, while, yes, it was smut, there was an actual story about the immoral affair between teacher and student, cliché as it might be the red-headed devil saw that it was well written with fleshed out character, and even spacing, the sex scenes were rather believable too. Riaz had to wonder if Naruto actually did those things to get such fine details of the act. Riaz had to fight down her blush as she remembered getting rather into the story the previous night, it was rather stimulating. Maybe a quick read would not be so bad, sitting up, she took the book in her hands and cracked it open. Rr but you, what are you reading? A voice called out to her, immediately shutting the book and managing not blush, Ria started at the owner of the voice. It was a girl who was slightly shorter than herself by a couple of centimeters, she had long ebony hair that went down to her legs, it done up in a ponytail tied by an orange ribbon, with two strands sloping backwards, she to write the academy uniform, but had knee-high socks, also she had a considerable bust, larger than Ria's own. Some men would go to call her the ideal Japanese woman by her looks alone, this was Akeno Himejima, Ria's best friend, and the other half of what the students called Kuo Academy's two great ladies. It's nothing Akeno, Ria's lied smoothly, this was definitely something, if people found out she was reading this, her public image may be ruined, just a book someone gave me after a job. Sitting down next to her friend, Akeno looked at the nondescript black book, is it any good? Ria's nodded, it's pretty well written, a rather steamy suddenly seen from what she read last flashed in her head, a light tinge of red dusted her cheeks, she put the book in her bag, knowing she won't be able to read it anymore, it's a good book from what I've read so far. Do you mind if I borrow it later then? Sure, there was no harm in sharing this with Akeno, right? Deciding to change subjects Ria said, the class is almost starting, and the teacher isn't here yet, what is taking so long? It is because we are getting a new homeroom professor who doubles as the physical education teacher as well, Gremory san a person answered in a serious voice as they say down on Ria's other side, she was a slim young woman also dressed in uniform, she had short black hair done in a bob cut, her violet eyes are hidden behind a pair of glasses, this was Sana Shitori. The student council president and one of Ria's friends, they start work today. The new teacher? What happened to her Inno-sensei? Ria's inquired. She had gotten herself into an accident and needs hip replacement surgery, Shell probably will not return for the rest of the year given her old age. Rr, do you know who the new person is? Akeno asked, Sauna shook her head. Well, we'll see now won't we? Ria stated as the bell rung, it took another six minutes before the door opened again. Sorry I'm late, a person called out, the voice made Ria's tilt her head to the side, why did it sound familiar? Stepping through the door was a blonde man in a blue tracksuit, he had untamed golden hair and sun-kissed skin, his electric blue eyes scanned the class, before a small smile made its way onto his face, the girls seemed to giggle and whisper with each other at the new teacher, some with blushes on their cheeks, boys seemed to be sizing up their new teacher, as for Ria's. Her eyes widened as she stared at the man standing in front of the class. My name is Yuzumaki Naruto, it'll be your be homeroom teacher, treat me well ya. Yeah. Naruto introduced himself with brilliant smile. Homeroom was a good calm class, it took 30 minutes every day in Kuo Academy, before kids go off to their other classes, it gave them time to do homework, eat breakfast, chat with friend and prepare for the day while the teacher took attendance. Ria's class was no different, some of the procrastinators were rushing to finish their homework, people were trying to catch a little extra shut eye, and mostly everyone was talking to their friends except there was one shift in the routine today. Yuzumaki-sensei, how old are you? A random girl asked their teacher. You guys can call me Naruto-sensei if you'd like, Naruto replied from the front of the class, and M22. Aren't you a little too young to be a teacher? Questioned one of the few boys in the class. Not really, I received my degree in kinesiology from the University of Tokyo last year and did a teaching internship in a couple schools before being hired here. Is your hair really that color blonde or do you dye it? A different person inquired, the man laughed and shook his head. I get asked that far too many times, yes, this is my natural hair color, just as I am sure Ria's is natural too, Naruto then turned his eyes toward the crimson haired devil sitting near the windows, who was watching him as he spoke, by the way, thanks for helping me yesterday Ria's, I hope my payment is to your liking. 
All conversations stopped there and then, the students looked towards the teacher who was smiling to the most popular girl in school, who had a very faint blush on her cheeks, then back to the teacher, not only that he seemed to use a familiar tone with her. R R Naruto sensei what do you mean by that? Akeno asked the question on everyone's mind. I sort of got lost yesterday, since I'm still pretty new here, and I ended up bumping to Ria's over there as she was getting dinner, I asked for her help and gave her a gift for her time, this caused whispers to erupt amongst that class. You also forgot to mention that you are going to be a teacher here, Ria said crossing her arms, and she had this adorable pout on her face, you could have said something you know. And where would the fun be in that? Naruto then tilted his head, by the way, how do you like your gift? It's okay, I'm not sure if was a good idea to give that book to me though given your current job. Hey now, you're the one who choose it, not me, you could've picked the other one, Ria's cold and fault him for that since it was the truth, she had a 50% chance of choosing the other book, by she picked the porn one instead, although, Naruto did not tell her it was porn in the first place. Just then the bell rang signaling homeroom to be over, the students left with gossip on their minds that concerned the new teacher and the most popular girl in school, by lunch, people would have rumors running rampant about the two. Rias didn't mind, some of what these kids thought of were rather out there and funny, Shed put an end to any of those that were malicious though. But for now, she had a more pressing matter to attend to. A certain pervert with a sacred gear needed to be watched for now. Hineko Tauju was a petite 15-year-old girl, first year in Kuo Academy, and considered its mascot, she had white hair that had several loose bangs that covered her forehead, and a short bob cut in the back, there were also wore two black cat clips, one on each side of her head, usually, she woke the standard uniform minus the shoulder cape. Currently though she was wearing a white t-shirt with the academy insignia over the heart with dark blue trimmings, she also had on a pair of dark blue bloomers, this was the girl's uniform for gun class, although some switched out their bloomers for pink tracksuit pants, the boys had something similar, except theirs were grey shorts or pants. Hineko was munching on some pocky as she and the rest of her class said for the arrival of their new gym teacher at the track of the school, based what she had heard from the morning announcements, the new person was a young man, gossipers said he looked a little attractive and seemed also like nice guy, there were also rumors of him knowing Ria's gremory, Kaneko. Being one of Ria's friends and one of the few devils in the girl's peerage, didn't know the man, so she guessed that he was a recent contractor. Ah sorry for running late, Naruto said as he arrived in front of everyone with a notebook, a cooler and a box that were all in a wagon, standing next to him was Sauna who he asked to help out for that period, since it is study hall for her at the moment, I got a bit lost and took a wrong turn over at the soccer field, then I bumped into Sauna sent here and asked for her help. The blonde was laughing merrily, while other people sweat dropped at his demeanor, he seemed far too ditzy as he looked at all the students around him, Kaneko thought he seemed like an idiot. So sensei what are we doing today? A random boy asked, that stopped the blonde who was looking at his notes. Well, your previous sensei said had left me a note saying yeah I'd be playing some volleyball today, the blonde then placed his notes back in the wagon, but today I've got something special planned for all my classes, since it is my first day here, Naruto smiled while closing his eyes. The students began to whisper among themselves wondering what their new sensei had in store, Kaneko on the other hand felt some dread, why did she get an ominous feeling from the teacher? We are going to run the track until the end of class, you don't have to run, I'm even going to let you walk with your friends, that sounded rather easy, the petite girl thought. How is that special? A random student asked. Ah, you see there is a punishment game involved, Naruto opened the cooler and produced a tiny bottle of dark green liquid, for every time I overtake you, you have to take an equal number of drinks of this. Uzumaki special vegetable juice. Sauna san here will ensure that you drink it. The student council president opened the top of it and sniffed it, it didn't smell bad, maybe it tasted bad. Are you even allowed to do this Naruto sensei? She asked. The principal gave me the go ahead, he then turned to his students, now then, go warm up and well start in three minutes. An echo walked towards sauna and greeted each other, morning, the petite girl greeted. Good morning, replied the student council president, she watched as the white haired girl did some stretches, what do you think of the new sensei Tauju san? He is odd, that was for sure, Sauna agreed, most teachers won't do this kind of stuff, it was too childish and weird, the fact that the principal gave the go-ahead was questionable, did he really just bump into you? Yes, he came from the field and saw me walking to my next class. I see. Alright, everyone line up. We're going to start. Everyone walked to where Naruto had placed the cooler and got prepared to run or walk the track, ready. Set. Go. The students took off, some were running, others were walking, everyone was moving save one person, Naruto stood at the starting line with a smile in his face, Kaneko who was jogging, saw this and was confused. Sauna walked up to him and tapped him on the shoulder, I thought you were going to run Naruto-sensei, she said. 
in giving them a good head start, Naruto replied. She watched him as he looked at the students, his eyes moving from one group to the next, when he turned his head to look for the person and first he smiled. Sauna looked back and saw that the person was three-fourths of the way done. Naruto turned to her. Please note how many times I lap them. With one last crack of his neck, the young sensei shot off. This shocked Sauna. Their sensei was fast, very fast. He caught up with those in last within moments, followed shortly by those in the middle. Kaneko, who was jogging, saw from her peripherals their teacher pass her at the outermost of the field. When Naruto managed to get ahead of the person in front, everyone felt dread. When he parked a few at the very end again, he shouted over his shoulder, you guys need to drink some of the juice, as he stayed passing more and more people, those students ended up trying to run, faster as to not get taken over again, the only one the teacher said nothing to was the person in first, he just passed them and kept running. When there was 15 minutes of class left, he told everyone to stop, as they lined up in front of his cooler, and Sauna, Naruto smiled at them, they all tried their best out there, even though it was out of fear of drinking some unknown liquid, great hustle everybody, he told them, now you can go to the locker rooms after you get your drink, oh except the person who was in first. They'd like to speak to you separately. As the person who was in front of the track, everyone else stood in front of Sauna, please drink the amount I give you, she said, Naruto sensei gave me the power to give you detentions if you didn't, so one by one the students got their drinks, Kaneko got three for herself, everyone looked on warily at the tiny bottles in their hands, not sure off what to do. The watchful eye of the student council president didn't help either. So deciding she'd rather get this over with and get her sweets, Kaneko opened one of her bottles and downed it in one go. She shuddered, disgusting, she muttered, the drink treated like someone shoved the nastiest vegetables they had in a blender and gave them this all. Seeing as their school mascot drinking the gunk, everyone else stayed to drink too. Kaneko drank her second one, just as quickly her tongue would not register the taste, it did not help at all, she also felt get stomach rumble. After drinking the third one, Kaneko dropped the bottle and ran at a blinding speed, on par with the best people in their track team. The third drink made Iwasan to throw up badly. Making it to the changing room and toward the bathroom stall, the silver-haired girl was ready to heave the contents of her belly, but then stopped, the pain in her stomach was gone, and the nausea was missing, not only that. Her head was clear, the fatigue had left, and she felt far better than she had in months, what the hell did she just drink? Udo Kiba was the most popular boys at school, well to the girls at least, his blonde hair, good looks and fair personality, made him the Bishounen prince of the school, this granted the second year boy with a growing fan base, full of giggling and squealing girls, although, this had made him the natural enemy of every other boy in school. Currently he had just finished running track with a new teacher, Naruto Uzumaki, he had heard about the punishment game from other students who had the teacher already, but didn't expect the results. He had finished in first, thanks to his slim build and natural ability, and being a devil helped a bit, what the threw for him a loop was the fact that their new sensei had managed to lap him, twice, a normal human had surpassed his speed and just kept going, although to be fair, the second time was because he was tired. What sort of stamina monster was this new sensei? He thought to himself as he walked over to the table set up with someone handing out the green drinks that had become infamous within the day. Akiba weighed up, Naruto called out as he approached his fellow blonde, the teacher smiled at him and patted his shoulder, good hustle out there, you're pretty fast, but lack stamina though. I don't think any student can keep running the track almost all period long, Yuzumaki sensei Akiba laughed, Naruto laughed as well. Very true, but on to business, since you were in first most of the time, you don't have to drink the juice, Kibble let out a relieved sigh, he already saw some of his classmates running while clutching their stomachs, those poor poor souls, following the teacher, Kibble watched as Naruto pulled out another bottle this time bigger than the others with an orange liquid inside. What's this? He asked. It's basically the same thing I'm giving them, Naruto nodded towards the last few stalkers who were drinking 4 to 5 of the Uzumaki juice, although it twice as healthy and doesn't taste like shit. Why are you actually making us drink these anyway? Kiba took a sip of the drink as he see that Naruto was waiting for him to do so, his eyes widened, this tasted like a good mix of mango, pineapple, and orange, this tastes amazing. I know right. Naruto smiled at him at his student, it takes out most impurities in your body, leaves you refreshed, more focused, and a bit more driven. Do you drink this every day sensei? Kiba noticed he was almost done with the bottle, funny when did that happen? Nah, I make these for special occasions, it'd get bored of drinking this all the time, it's not like it's ramen, the student heard his sensei muttering something about it being the food of the gods, and something about good diets needing ramen in them, Kiba didn't say anti about that since Naruto looked like he was in his own little world. Well, thank you again sensei, that was very refreshing, Kiba bored and turned to leave. No problem, if you need help with anything just ask me, it is a sensei's job to help out our students after all, Naruto then blinked, just don't ask about math, or science, or history, or girls, but ask me anything that don't concern those four things and I'm your man. 
Thibba chuckled, all right, if I ever need anything, it'll come all you, as he walked away, the young blonde did feel his body being a bit strong, the tiredness was gone, and he felt as if he can take on the world, it felt rather nice. When he endured the boy's changing room, Kibba was afraid people would be throwing up everywhere, upon going inside he saw it was clean, and that everyone seemed fine even after drinking the stuff, in fact they looked healthier too, this made Kibba wonder, did their sensei and know how to make potions? Was he a mage or at least know of the supernatural world? Because that was the only real explanations he could think of at the moment for such a miracle drink. The Sei Haidu was not happy, one of the perverted trio had a date the next day, and his crazy sensei had him drink the stupid drink in his class. He had to drink six bottles of that nasty drink, six. Unlike everyone else who felt better before they reached the bathroom, Issei ended up having to take a dump, very long one, hopefully this won't give him diarrhea, the pervert didn't want to stand up an ice op eye, air girl. Not only that but his sensei was an enemy of man, just like that Kiba jerk, he was handsome, charismatic and funny, the girls seemed to be lining up to talk to him, they were blushing too, as they took secretive photos of him on their phones. Why cold girls be like that with him? He cried as he sat on the toilet. Oh well, Issei thought to himself, I have you Uma-chan now. It was the end of the day and Naruto is finishing up some paperwork in the office, his co-workers bid him farewell, and he did the same in kind, the blonde man was finished his notes about his new students, listing what he'd like to fix in them throughout the year, well most were healthy kids, he'd like them to be more fit so they could be healthier. The drinks he made them were a rather odd concoction a friend of his made a few years ago back in Tokyo U, that too was a punishment game they had when they failed to run the course, the blonde shuddered in remembrance, now though, it didn't taste so bad, it's not like it was one of the other drinks the data gathering tennis player made. Ah. Naruto clutched his head as a searing pain suddenly flared in it, images flashed so quickly he couldn't keep up with them, as the pain receded, Naruto took some calming breaths, his mind soared out the images and information came to him. This occurrence had happened numerous times during his 22 years of life, his mind would pulse and pain would follow, images of people, places and power would flow through his brain, when it all finished and the pain was gone, Naruto would remember a place and a time so long ago, a world full of ninjas and powers that were out of this world. The world where gigantic creatures would do battle and reshaping the land, a world he used to live in. At first he thought he was crazy, went to a psychiatrist too, they said he just had an overactive imagination, and that it was nothing, when more and more kept coming one after another, Naruto wrote it down in his journal, of the stories about a little blonde boy who had a giant beast sealed within him and his fate, a story about Naruto Uzumaki. It was during college, after writing in one of his journals, a friend of his saw it, they said it was a good story, and he should publish it, Naruto was conflicted for about a week, this was his connection to that world he seemingly was in, why would he want to share it to the world? In the end, however, Naruto did publish it and had it sold in stores, thus the tales of the hyperactive knucklehead ninja was born. It sold well, very well, he was rolling in hundreds of thousands of yen from just the first three books, titles. Demon of the Mist, The One Tale, The Slug Princess, he wrote it all under the pen name Minato Namikas, although he decided to teach us his job, he kept on writing in his journals and slowly was releasing more as time went on. Although, the whole itcha itcha thing was a tribute to the godfather in those memories, God bless his perverted soul. A sad smile appeared on his face, Kasan, he muttered, an image of him fighting the Kyubi no Kitsune appeared in his mind, and a stunning red-headed woman helping him defeat it. He'll need to write that down later, Naruto said to himself, after training of course, won't want to get rusty, even though I'm a teacher. Naruto stretched his arms over his head, then slung his duffel bag full of clothes and paperwork over his shoulder. My first day of teaching went better than expected, he said to himself with a smile. He cracked his neck and started to walk on his path home. Now all I have to do tonight is have dinner, get some anaerobic exercise in, and plan my lesson for tomorrow. Doesn't sound like a bad night. As he was walking home the blonde teacher stopped as he saw something interesting. Huh? That's, Naruto frowned trying to put a name to a face of a kid walking down the street with a nice looking girl, the girl had a nice white top and a black skirt that reached to her mid-calf, she also had long shoulder length brown hair, Issei Haidu, huh? I thought he was a pervert nobody liked. Yes, the young blonde had heard the rumors about him, Issei Haidu, along with Mitsuda and Motohama, were known as the three biggest perverts at Kuo Academy, something about sexual deviants always doing something perverted every day, and what not, to be honest, Naruto doesn't know what to believe about that since he hasn't had any real proof of it happening. Then again there was the whole girls kendo club incident that afternoon. Well that's good for him I guess, I mean a pervert should have his chance once in a while with a girl, Naruto nodded to himself, as he was about to walk away part of him stopped as he looked after the two walking throughout town. 
Parts of him wanted to follow the young couple, his perverseness as well as his responsibility as teacher, while other parts of him didn't want to, his laziness as well as his self-image, Naruto scratched his head and grabbed a hundred yen coin from his pocket, heads I go home, tails I follow them. Flipping the coin he caught it in his hand and saw the result, nodding once again his choice was made, adjusting the strap of his duffel bag, he set off towards his destination. They say cold be happier, he went out with Yuuma today and everything went great, they had ice cream, walked around and talked, now as the day was ending they had ended up at the park, I had a great time today, Yuuma said to him as they sat on the side of the fountain. I did to Yuuma-chan, the pervert replied as he blushed. Before we end this date, will you do something for me say kun The girl said as she put her hands behind her back. This is it. A pair of op-i I mean Yuuma-chan is going to confess to me. Issei thought to himself, what is it Yuuma-chan? She stood up with her back towards him. Can you die for me? That caused the boy to blink in confusion. Eh? I don't think I heard that right, I thought you said you wanted me to die. No you heard right, can you please die for me? A pair of black feathered wings appeared on her back as she looked over shoulder, as she took flight, she kept speaking, these past few days with you have been fun, I really enjoyed them, a spear made out of light appeared in her right hand, and then she hurled it. What? Am I really going to die here? I haven't even seen some op I yet. As the spear was about to impact his chest a hand reached out and grabbed it, Issei and Yuuma both looked confused as to what happened, following the length of the arm to the owner, Issei saw that it was none other than the new gym teacher, he was looking curiously at the glowing weapon in his left hand, Yu Yuzumaki sensei The blonde looked at him for a moment before whacking him on the head with spear of light, Ga. What was that for? I told you to call me Naruto-sensei at during class, hi do, Naruto said with a pout, and since we're not on school grounds, just call me Naruto, he then smiled at his student, you're pretty lucky though, I almost didn't end up following you, if that coin ended up heads, who knows what would've happened here. Who are you? Yuuma asked as she glared at the newcomer, she didn't even feel him appear or pass through the barrier she had set up, not only that, he seemed to be holding onto the spear she had thrown, no human should be able to do that, Hess dangerous. Naruto smiled up at the girl, Naruto Yuzumaki, new teacher at Kuo Academy, the blonde introduced himself, I'd say it's a pleasure to meet you, but you tried to kill my student here, Naruto then looked over the spear in his hands, interesting thing you got here. Are you a devil by any chance? The blonde squinted his eyes as he looked at the girl's wings, ah no, your wings are different, they look angelic, but black full an angel perhaps. Hmm? How would you know about that? Yuuma asked preparing another spear. The devil informed me of these things recently. Devils. Fallen angels. What are you talking about Naruto-sensei? Issei shouted. Ah I forgot you were still here, Naruto chuckled, Yuuma had a bead of sweat on her forehead as Issei face faulted, I should probably get you home before anything too violent happens. I can't let you do that. Has a threat to me and he has to die, Yuuma stated as she threw her spear at the two boys, the spear in Naruto's hand flashed orange for a second, before Naruto threw it at the incoming projectile, the two spears rebounded off each other and dispersed into light particles, Naruto frowned as he looked over his shoulder at the clearly confused Issei. Time to get you out of here, Issei was shocked when a duplicate of Naruto appeared from the teacher's shadow and in front of him. WH what? Sorry, the clone apologized, he did a karate chop to the back of the boy's neck knocking him out, before the boy could fall to the floor, the clone grabbed him and disappeared in a flash of black light, Yuma didn't let her shock reach her face this time. What was that? There were two of the blonde idiot for a couple seconds, and then that weird darkness, both Issei and the other one are gone. That should be impossible due to the barrier that is placed up. The fallen angel growled, where did you take him? A safe place, Naruto replied as he stared at her, suddenly a smile appeared on the blonde's face, a crazed smile that screamed excitement, even though Yuuma was already on edge, that smile made her even more nervous, now then, Yuuma-chan was it? Care to play with me for a bit? The fallen angel blinked in response, and when she did open her eyes again the teacher was gone. She didn't know what it was, whether it was her sense of self-preservation or instinct, but she was compelled to put her spear of light to her left, just in time too, since a powerful force and slammed into the spear, destroying the object, and sent her careening towards the ground, as Yuuma tried to right herself midair, she felt another blow coming towards her, this time she cold react. Several lacerations were made across her midriff, cutting up her clothes and sent her into a tree. Hissing in pain, she tried to regain her bearings and saw the next attack coming, she rolled out of the way, with the attack barely clipping her right wing, the tree behind her wasn't so lucky, four deep gashes, nearly halfway into the trunk of three, exploded sending splinters in all directions, putting some distance between herself and the teacher, Yuma took a chance to look at him. The blonde teacher didn't look much different from before, the only big difference was his arms, they were covered in some black energy with an orange tint to them, not only that, but they seemed to have a flame-like quality, and made his hands claws, what are you a devil? 
She asked as she stood up, she readied another spear as the blonde smiled at her. Oh no, I'm no devil, I'm a human, Yuma threw her spear, which was quickly caught and crushed in Naruto's left hand, this energy feels weird, it's not a pure is it? Naruto asked as he caught yet another one of her spears, he looked at her with an insane smile on his face, throwing the spear away, he started to stalk towards the girl. Iwuma kept hurling spear after spear, and the man casually dodged each and every one of them, in her fear, the fallen angel forgot that she could fly, Naruto kept his approach, and as he was just a meter away from her, Iwuma created one last spear and stabbed Naruto in the gut, a look of victory appeared on the fallen angel's face, until he grabbed her arm. Even though his chest was bleeding profusely, Naruto laughed maniacally as he continued to shove the spear deeper into it, Iwuma looked on in terror as he gripped her arm and forced himself to only be a few centimeters in front of her. The fallen angel tried to break free from his grip as his other hand, covered in that eerie blackness, approached her neck and started to suffocate the girl. Her rather long life seemed to flash before her eyes as he gripped her neck and was slowly cutting off her oxygen. She was only able to breathe again when she felt him let go and move away from her, coughing, as well as trying to catch her breath, she saw the blonde frowning at the newcomer who stabbed a spear of light into his arm, standing in front of Yuma was an old man in a dark brown trench coat with a matching fedora, as well as black pants and shoes, on his back were a large pair of raven wings. Donaseek, she wheezed out. They'll fight this man, Rainer Sama, Donaseek told her, he prepared another spear of light and prepared to fight, Naruto, for his part, ripped out the spear from his arm and let it dissolve to light, yanking out the one in his chest, the blonde examined it before the same odd blackness erupted from his left palm and seemed to consume it. So are you going to fight me now? He asked as he cracked his knuckles. It's been a while since I've fought, so make it fun worm, the fallen angel answered as a bloody thirsty smirk appeared on his face, across from him, Naruto grew a matching one, the dark aura around him expanded as he faced down the fallen angel. And no, Yuma, no, Rainer stuttered as she stood up, we need to retreat, this, this being is dangerous, the female fallen angel had a look of fear in her eyes, we need more help to face him, she was already in the air and was backing away from the blonde. But Rainer Sama. It's your death if you stay then, the female fallen angel flew off leaving the two males, Donacy turned to Naruto, who seemed to be watching Rainer fly away. To be honest, I liked fighting her better, she was nicer to look at, Naruto still had the insane smile on his face, she also felt far stronger than you, the blonde sighed and lost the smile, this won't be as fun as before. They'll show you something fun then. Donaseek threw his spear and Naruto casually sidestepped it before dispersing from sight, the fallen angel looked around for his opponent, not sensing the teacher at all, in that instant, the male felt his chest explode in pain, wh what? Looking down he saw a black clawed arm sticking through his chest from behind him. You know I could have done this to that Yuma or whatever her name was from the very beginning, Donaseek felt the arm being pulled out of him, the darkness from the wound, however, kept spreading all over his body, Naruto walked in front of him and shook his head, so weak. Wh what is happening to me? The fallen angel could feel his power wane and he felt numb. I left my technique in you, Naruto explained, it leeches off other beings, slowly consuming them, by then the fallen angel seemed to not be able to focus as his eyes glazed over, I would have consumed you personally if you were strong enough, but you taste nasty, Naruto smirked again, so please be useful and return to the planet. At that point Donaseek was completely covered by the darkness, he was motionless on all fours, Naruto lifted his foot up and nudged the fallen figure gently, the figure broke into billions of tiny pieces floating off with the wind. Supernatural beings are so tough, Naruto said to himself, but then again Riaz felt stronger than them by a large margin, walking over to where he dropped his duffel bag Naruto decided to head home to get done rest, tomorrow that is say kid was probably going to give him a headache, so with a dark flash he disappeared from the park. Sensei. Sensei. True to his prediction, Naruto was already forming a headache, it was not a memory headache as he liked to refer to them, but an honest-to-god headache, he should have let the kid die, it would have been much quieter. But I'd hate myself for it, he sighed as he sat at his desk, the door to the office opened with a loud bang as Issei ran inside, yo, Issei, what's up? You remember you Uma-chan right, Naruto-sensei? Issei asked, Naruto blinked confusedly, what kind of question was that? Apparently, the blonde said that out loud since the pervert kept on talking, everyone seems to forgotten her, my parents, Motohama and Mitsuda too. You remember her right? Well that's interesting, the teacher said, more to himself than any to say, I didn't know they could alter memories as well huh, can devils do that too I wonder. Alter memories? Issei repeated, Naruto blinked and scratched the back of his head sheepishly. Sorry Issei, lost my focus, Naruto then looked his student in the eye, to answer your question, yes I remember you Uma, I also remember saving your life from her. So everything that happened yesterday was true. She really did sprout wings and try to kill me with some sort of laser spear. Yup. And you caught it. 
Issei shouted as he pointed at the older male. Uh huh. Then you made some weird copy of yourself, knocked me out, and then, I woke up at home. Raiden won, huh, you're not as stupid as some rooms I've heard say you are, Naruto smiled at him, Issei blushed at the compliment, or at least he thought Is was one. Can you tell me what is going on sensei? Well, I can't really say what's going on. I see, Issei said dejectedly, this caused Naruto to look at the boy with some pity. It's not like that Issei, the boy looked back at him again, I only found out about this whole devil, fallen angel ordeal the day before yesterday, Naruto said with an embarrassed smile, this caused Issei to face fault. But then how were you able to do that whole teleporting thing and the clone thing? Naruto lost the smile and turned serious. That is a point of discussion for another time, Issei, looking at the younger boy dead in the eye, Naruto continued, Issei are you sure you want to learn about this, as you can see yesterday, the world of the supernatural is rather dangerous, most people won't want to go in their guns blazing after knowing the fact, if you are not completely sure you may just die. The pervert gulped, what he is saying is true, Issei admitted to himself, it is dangerous, if Naruto sensei didn't appear last night, Yuma-chan would have killed me. Would I be here now if that had happened? Do I really want to know what is out there? Naruto watched as his student contemplated things over, it was his job as a teacher to help prepare his students for the real world, that was why he was asking Issei this, to know for sure that the boy would be able to handle the consequences of what happens, if he does step into that dangerous world, then again, he'll probably guide him through it. It is my job after all to help those under my care, Naruto internally said to himself. I want to know, Issei stated breaking Naruto out of his own thoughts. You sure? Yes, those fallen angels. Naruto nodded, are already after me, I might as well know as to why and better prepare myself right. The blonde once again stared him in the eye with that serious look on his face, Issei resisted the urge to change his mind right there, and then with the look he was being given, he wanted to go through with his decision, he wanted to know what was happening. As he looked back with a determined face, he saw Naruto lose that look before giving him a full-blown smile. They are determined, it'll give you that much, Naruto told him with a laugh, it'll have to ask the person I know who told me about these things tonight, if anything, she already probably knows what's happening already, Issei's face lit up and went to hug his teacher. Thank you so much sensei. The blonde frowned as the student hugged him. Look, I get you're all happy and whatnot, but could you not hug me? I thought you liked breasts, the pervert stopped what he was doing, took a step back, and cleared his throat. We shall never mention this again sensei, Issei stated seriously, Naruto nodded. Now go on, both you and I need to get to homeroom. Hi sensei. Issei then ran off, leaving Naruto shaking his head at the boy, but had a small smile on his face. At least the headache wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. Naruto sat at his dining table waiting for his guest, unlike last time he didn't have any extravagant dinner set up, he was running late due to the fact that on his way he had helped out an old lady cross the street, ran across a black cat, forcing him go another way, and got lost on the road of life, so in the end, the gym teacher just bought some Chinese takeout, this consisted of chow mein. Sweet and sour pork, fried rice and some string beans, with some egg drop soup on the side. When a bright light filled the room, he looked towards the living room of the apartment to see his guest, however, instead of Ria's grimery appearing it was another person. Akeno Himejima, the Natashiko looked around before she saw her gym teacher looking at her. Rara I didn't know you had a contract with us Naruto-sensei, Akeno admitted as she bowed to him. Naruto is just fine for now Akeno-san, and no need to bow to me, the blonde replied with a kind smile, although I was expecting Ria's to appear, are you part of her, what did she call it again, peerage. Hi, I am part of Butch's peerage, Naruto nodded his head. I see, he then grinned at her, have you had dinner yet Akeno-san? I got takeout. No, I haven't and thank you for the offer, she sat down on one side of the dining table as he handed his student a plate, so Naruto-san, why did you try to summon Butchu? Akeno asked as she placed some food onto her plate. I had a request for her concerning one of my other students, I'm guessing she already knows that something happened, but I'd like to confirm it first, going to the fridge he looked at his selection of drinks, what do you want to drink? I got water, milk, orange juice, sake, beer, I don't have tea at the moment, so sorry about that. Rara offering your female student alcohol sensei. I'm sure that's not allowed, Akeno teased, or are you hoping for something to happen sensei? Naruto chuckled and rolled his eyes, causing the girl to giggle. Oh come on, you're a high school student, I remember when I was in that age, I was always out experimenting and stuff, so I'm pretty sure you had some alcohol before, Naruto then looked at her, so I take it water is fine. Hi, grabbing a pitcher of water from the fridge and a bottle of beer for himself, he placed them on the table before getting a glass for the girl, the blonde even went as far as pouring her drink for her, as they ate, they made small talk, and continued to tease each other having laughs all around, when they were done, and washing dishes, they went back to the original topic. 
So who was the student you were talking about sensei? Akeno asked as she dried a dish. I told you to call me Naruto, Naruto pouted causing the girl to giggle again, the blonde decided he liked the sound of her laugh, but the student him talking about is Issei Haidu, Akeno stiffened, and Naruto saw, I see, something is happening with him isn't there? Akeno nodded slowly as they kept doing the dishes, would it be possible to let him meet Ria's tomorrow? Hi, but you wanted to meet him anyway, it'll be sure to tell her. Thank you, Akeno-san, Naruto replied with a smile. It is nothing sensei, thank you for the food. It's no problem either, I hate eating alone, Naruto then frowned, hmm, I should pay you somehow. No it's fine, you already fed me dinner sensei. I still feel like I should pay you somehow, the blonde then snapped his fingers, I know. He'll pay you similarly as I did Ria's, Akeno tilted her head to the side in confusion, you can choose any book from my shelf over, and you can have it. Are you sure sensei? Yeah, I'm pretty sure, Akeno nodded and walked over to the bookshelf, as she scanned them, Naruto put his bottle of beer in the recycling bin and washed his hands. You said I can have any book right sensei? Yeah, Akeno walked up to him with a hardcover book in her hand, the title was Itcha Itcha. Mistress 2, with an image of a cat oh nine tails on the front, huh? Well, I didn't expect this, Naruto gave her a skeptical look, she just smiled sweetly back at him. You said any book sensei, she said sweetly, this caused the man to chuckle. But I did, Naruto took the book from her before looking at the inside really quick, did you read the first one? Akeno looked at him confused, just want to know. R.A.R.A. trying to find out what I like sensei. Are you infatuated with me already? Naruto once again rolled his eyes, grabbing a nearby pen, he wrote something down before giving the book to her. Again thank you and enjoy the book. No problem sensei, will I be seeing you with Issei tomorrow? Yeah, probably, then with a glowing circle appeared beneath her feet, and soon Akeno had disappeared. Thanks for watching.